I walked in on my girlfriend cheating with my brother, and my father kicked him out. Years later, he returned asking for my inheritance. This happened when I was 18. At the time everything seemed fine between me and my family. My older brother Jake was 24 and we were pretty close. After our mom passed away when I was about 10, it was just the three of us. Me, Jake, and our dad. Dad did his best to hold things together and honestly he was great. He worked long hours but always made time for us. He raised us on strong values things like loyalty, honesty, and respect. He made it very clear that cheating wasn't something he'd tolerate. I always took that seriously and I assumed Jake did too. Back then I was dating a girl named Rachel. We'd been together for about a year and I really thought she was the one for me. Typical high school stuff. We hung out a lot, texted all the time, and she even met my dad and had dinner with us. She and Jake got along well but I didn't think much of it. I thought it was nice that they bonded. One day I got out of track practice early. My coach had cut the session short so I got home about an hour earlier than usual. I remember being excited about having some extra time to relax before everyone else got home. As I walked in I noticed Jake's car in the driveway which was a bit odd since he was usually at work or out with friends. I didn't see him downstairs so I figured he was in his room or something. As I headed upstairs I heard voices. Jake's and Rachel's coming from my room. I stopped on the stairs feeling this weird drop in my stomach. It didn't make sense. Why were they in my room? I brushed it off thinking maybe they were looking for something or Jake was showing her a video game but their voices, they sounded off. There was laughing but it wasn't the casual kind. Something was different. I walked up the rest of the stairs my heart pounding and opened my door. There they were together on my bed and yeah I don't have to spell it out. You know what they were doing? Dot. It was like time froze. I stood there staring. Rachel jumped off the bed and Jake just sat there looking like a deer caught in headlights. I couldn't even process what I was seeing. My own brother and the girl I'd been with for a year. Everything I thought I knew about them shattered in that moment. I felt a wave of anger and betrayal mixed with shock. I couldn't even get words out at first. They both started talking at the same time stumbling over excuses. Jake kept saying things like it wasn't supposed to happen and Rachel was going on about how they had feelings for each other. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. I finally yelled, are you kidding me? It was the only thing I could say as I stood there my hand shaking. I told them both to get out out of my room and out of my life. Rachel tried to talk but I wasn't hearing it. I told her we were done right then and there. Jake? I didn't even know what to say to him. It felt like everything between us was broken in a way that could never be fixed. Dot. When they left I just sat on the floor staring at the spot where they'd been. I kept thinking about all the times they'd been together and how I hadn't noticed a thing. I felt like the biggest idiot. How long had this been going on? How many times had they lied to me? That night I wandered around for hours not knowing what to do or where to go. I didn't want to go home. I couldn't face Jake and I definitely didn't want to see Rachel again. I felt so lost and alone. Dot. When I finally got back home dad was in the kitchen. He could tell something was up right away. Normally we'd talk about how practice went or what was for dinner but this time he just looked at me and asked what's going on. At first I tried to brush it off saying I was just tired but dad knew me too well. Eventually everything came spilling out. I told him what happened, how I'd walked in on Jake and Rachel and how they tried to apologize like that would somehow make it better. Dot. As I talked I saw dad's face change. First he looked confused then just angry. I'd only seen him that mad a few times in my life. He clenched his fists, his face turning red. Your own brother did this to you? With your girlfriend? He asked, his voice tight with anger. All I could do was nod. Dot. Dad didn't say anything for a minute. Then he let out this deep breath and yelled for Jake to come downstairs. The house practically shook with how loud he was. I could hear Jake's footsteps on the stairs and I knew this was about to get ugly. Dot. When Jake walked into the kitchen he looked like he knew what was coming. He didn't try to deny it. He didn't even try to act like he didn't know why dad was mad. Instead he just looked at me with this weird mix of regret and frustration. Dot. Dad didn't waste any time. He started yelling at Jake, asking him how he could do this to his own brother. Jake tried to defend himself, mumbling something about how it wasn't planned, how they had feelings for each other. But dad wasn't having it. Feelings? You call betraying your own family feelings? Dad shouted. Dot. Jake kept trying, his voice getting more desperate, but dad cut him off. There's nothing complicated about loyalty. You made a choice Jake and now you're going to live with it. Then dad said something that shocked me. He told Jake to pack his things and get out the house. He was kicking him out. Dot. Jake stood there, stunned. He looked at me like he was expecting me to defend him or say something. But I didn't. I just stared back at him, feeling nothing but anger. Dot. Dad didn't hesitate. You betrayed your brother. You disrespected this family. I don't want you under my roof anymore. Jake didn't argue. He just went upstairs and I could hear him throwing his stuff into a bag. When he came back down he didn't say a word. He just walked toward the door. Before he left, he paused, his hand on the doorknob. If this is how it's going to be, then I'm done with this family, he said, his voice cold. Then he walked out, slamming the door behind him. Dot. After Jake walked out that night, everything felt different. The house was quieter, emptier. It was just me and dad now and neither of us really knew how to process what had happened. 
We ate dinner in silence that night. Normally the three of us would talk and laugh about our day, but now it was just awkward. Dad kept looking at me like he wanted to say something, but the words never came. I think we were both just too stunned to know what to do next. Dot. That night, I couldn't sleep. I kept replaying everything in my head, walking in on Jake and Rachel, the fight, Dad kicking Jake out. The way Jake looked at me before he left, like I was supposed to feel sorry for him, but I didn't. I was just angry, angry at Jake for betraying me, angry at Rachel for lying to me, and even a little angry at myself for not seeing it sooner. The next few days were rough. I tried to focus on school and track practice, but it was hard to keep my mind off everything that had happened. Everywhere I went, it felt like there were constant reminders of what Jake and Rachel had done. I'd see couples at school and feel that bitter sting of betrayal all over again. It was like a cloud hanging over me that I couldn't shake. Dot. At home, things were strained between me and dad. Not because we were mad at each other, but because neither of us knew how to fill the void that Jake had left. We'd been a tight-knit family for so long, and now it felt like that bond had been completely shattered. A few weeks passed, and we didn't hear anything from Jake. No calls, no messages, nothing. It was like he had disappeared from our lives, and honestly, I didn't really mind. After what he'd done, I wasn't in any hurry to talk to him, but I could tell it was harder on dad. As much as he was angry with Jake, he was still his son, and I could see the hurt in dad's eyes every time he sat down for dinner, and there was an empty chair where Jake used to sit. Things stayed like that for a while, me and dad just trying to adjust to this new normal, but then, a couple of years later, everything changed again. Dad got sick, dot. At first, it seemed like no big deal. He was just tired all the time and had lost some weight, but we figured it was just the flu or stress from work. He finally went to the doctor after I nagged him about it for weeks, and that's when we got the bad news. Cancer. Stage 4. There was nothing they could really do except try to manage the symptoms and keep him as comfortable as possible. Dot hearing that news was like a punch to the gut. I felt like my world was crashing down all over again. Dad had been my rock through everything with Jake and Rachel, and now he was the one fading away. I didn't know how to handle it. I did my best to be there for him, though. I took him to all of his appointments, stayed with him during treatments, and did everything I could to keep his spirits up. We watched a lot of old movies together, played cards, and talked about anything and everything except Jake. Neither of us brought him up. It was like we had this unspoken agreement to just pretend he didn't exist. As dad's condition worsened, he had to quit working, and I picked up a couple of part-time jobs to help cover the bills. It was tough juggling work, school, and taking care of him, but I didn't mind. He'd done everything for me growing up, and now it was my turn to be there for him, dot. Despite everything, dad always tried to keep things light. He'd crack jokes and act like everything was fine, even when I could see he was struggling. It was hard to watch, but that was just who he was, always putting others first, even when he was the one who needed help. Dot. One day, when things were getting really bad, dad sat me down for a talk. Listen, I want you to know how proud I am of you, he said, his voice weak but steady. You've been there for me through all of this, and I couldn't have asked for a better son. I felt a lump in my throat, but I forced a smile. You don't have to thank me, dad. I'm just doing what you taught me. But deep down, I was breaking. I knew what he was trying to say. He was preparing me for when he wouldn't be around anymore, dot. It was only a few months after that conversation that dad passed away. It happened at home, with me by his side. Our aunt came over to be with us, and it was peaceful. But still, it felt like my whole world had been ripped apart. He was my last real family, and now he was gone. The funeral was a blur. I remember standing there, surrounded by people, some I recognized, others I didn't. They all came up to me, offering their condolences and telling me how great a guy my dad was. And they were right, he was. But the whole time, all I could think about was how much I wished he was still there, dot. And you know what hurt the most? Jake didn't even bother to show up. Not a call, not a message, nothing. He knew dad was sick. Our aunt had tried reaching out to him, but he ignored it. I kept telling myself that it didn't matter, that it was better that he stayed away. But deep down, it stung. I mean, this was his dad, too. No matter what had gone down between us, he should have been there. At least for dad, dot. After the funeral, we gathered at my aunt's house for a small reception. A few of dad's old friends shared stories about him, and I tried to smile and nod, but my mind kept drifting back to Jake. I don't know why, but part of me kept expecting him to show up, like maybe he'd have a change of heart or something. But he didn't. He was just? Gone, dot. Later, comma, we started going through dad's will. I had no idea what to expect, because dad never really talked about his finances or what he planned to leave behind. I figured there wouldn't be much left after all the medical bills. But I was wrong, dot. Turns out, dad had some savings and investments that I didn't even know about. And it wasn't just a little bit. He'd managed to save up quite a bit over the years. The lawyer explained everything to me, going through all the details. And then, the real shocker. Dad had left almost everything to me. The house, his savings, all of it. I was stunned. I mean, I knew dad trusted me, but I never expected to get so much. Then the lawyer mentioned that dad had left Jake a small amount, barely anything compared to what he left me. 
Just enough that Jake couldn't contest it, but not enough to make any real difference in his life. I didn't know how to feel about that. On one hand, it seemed fair. Jake hadn't been there for dad, not when he was sick, not at the end. But on the other hand, it felt, final. Like dad was making sure Jake couldn't just come back and take advantage of anything. Dot, our aunt, looked at me after the lawyer finished explaining everything, and I could see the sadness in her eyes. Your dad really wanted to make sure you were taken care of, she said softly. He knew you'd be responsible. I nodded, trying to hold back tears. I felt grateful, but also incredibly lonely. I had everything dad had worked for, but I didn't have him anymore, dot. That night, I sat in my old room at my aunt's place, staring at the ceiling and thinking about everything I'd lost. My dad, my brother. It felt like everything I knew was gone. And now I was left with this huge responsibility, trying to figure out what came next. A few weeks after the funeral, I was starting to get used to life without dad. It wasn't easy. Between selling the house, dealing with all the paperwork, and trying to keep up with work, I barely had time to process everything. But honestly, keeping busy helped. It gave me something to focus on. Something to distract me from how alone I felt. Dot, then comma, out of nowhere, I got a message from Jake. It had been years since I'd heard from him. Not a single call or text since he walked out that night. The message was short and to the point. We need to talk. I remember staring at my phone, feeling a mix of emotions. Part of me wanted to ignore it. After all, Jake had made it clear he didn't want to be a part of the family anymore. But another part of me was curious. Why now? Why did he suddenly want to talk? After some thought, I decided to meet him. We agreed to meet at a coffee shop downtown. Neutral ground, I figured. If things got heated, at least we wouldn't be at home or somewhere too personal, dot. When I got there, Jake was already sitting at a table, looking around nervously. He looked different. Older. More tired. Life clearly hadn't been easy for him. I sat down, and for a minute, neither of us said anything. The silence was awkward. Heavy. I wasn't about to be the first to speak, so I just crossed my arms and waited. Dot eventually. Comma Jake cleared his throat and started talking. So. I heard about dad, he said, not making eye contact. I know I wasn't there, but I'm sorry. I shrugged, unsure of how to respond. Yeah, well, it's done now. What do you want, Jake? He flinched a little at the bluntness, like he wasn't expecting me to cut to the chase so quickly. Look, I know I wasn't around, I know I messed up, but I'm struggling, man. I heard about the inheritance, and I don't think it's fair that dad left you everything and almost nothing for me. That hit me like a punch in the gut. The nerve of him, showing up after all this time to talk about money. Are you serious right now? That's why you wanted to talk? Because of the money? Jake held up his hands, trying to calm me down. No, it's not just that. I get it. You're mad, and you have every right to be. But I'm your brother, and I need your help. I leaned forward, glaring at him. Brother? You haven't acted like my brother in years. You bailed on us when things got tough. You didn't even show up when dad was sick or when he died. And now you want money? Jake rubbed the back of his neck, looking down at the table. I know, I know. But things were complicated. I was trying to figure things out with Emma. He trailed off, clearly uncomfortable. Don't even bring her up, I snapped, cutting him off. I don't want to hear any excuses about her or how complicated things were. You made your choice when you walked out. You had years to make things right, and you didn't. You could have called dad, visited him something. But you didn't. Jake looked down, and for a moment I thought maybe he was actually listening, like he understood what I was saying. But then he shook his head and spoke again. You're just like dad, you know that? Always holding grudges. Maybe that's why he left you everything. He was just using that fight as an excuse to favor you. That was it for me. I slammed my hand on the table, hard enough that people around us turned to look, but I didn't care. Favor me? Dad gave you every chance, Jake. He tried to reach out to you, and you pushed him away. You never even tried to fix things. Jake's face hardened, but he didn't say anything. I could see the frustration building, but he knew he had no ground to stand on. After a moment he sighed. Look, I'm not here to fight. I'm just asking for a little help. Things have been rough, and I thought maybe you'd be willing to share some of the inheritance. I felt like laughing, but not because it was funny. It was the kind of laugh you do when you're so fed up with someone's crap that you don't know how else to react. Share? You want me to share the money dad left me? After everything you did? You didn't even show up for his funeral, Jake. And now you think you deserve something? Jake flinched again, and for a second he looked genuinely hurt. I was going through stuff, alright? You have no idea what it was like. No, Jake, I don't. And you know why? Because you shut me out. You made it clear you wanted nothing to do with this family, so don't come crawling back now, acting like you're entitled to anything. You weren't there for dad when he needed you, and you sure as hell weren't there for me. The silence between us was thick. Jake's face was red, and I could tell he wanted to say more, but he held back. Finally, he sighed and said, I thought maybe we could start fresh, you know? Move past everything. I shook my head, feeling more exhausted than angry at this point. I'm not holding a grudge, Jake. I'm just not pretending like everything's fine when you've done nothing to fix what you broke. You made your choice a long time ago. 
Jake sighed again, this time more out of frustration. Fine, if that's how it's gonna be, but just know you're making this about you, not about dad. I couldn't believe he was trying to spin it that way. This isn't about me, Jake. It's about you taking responsibility for what you did, and if you really think you're entitled to anything after abandoning us, then you're not the brother I used to know. Jake stood up, pushing his chair back so hard it scraped against the floor. Alright, I get it, you don't want anything to do with me, but don't come crying to me when you end up just like dad, bitter and alone. That stung, but I didn't let it show. I just stared at him, keeping my face blank. I'm not the one who walked away, Jake. You did, and if you can't see that then we're done here. Jake glared at me one last time before storming out of the coffee shop. I watched him leave, feeling a familiar mix of anger and disappointment. Part of me had hoped, deep down, that maybe he'd come back and genuinely apologize, that maybe we could start fixing things. But he was still the same Jake who walked out years ago, always shifting the blame, always making excuses. I sat there for a while after he left, staring at the empty chair. Part of me felt relieved that I finally got to say my piece, but another part of me was just tired. Tired of hoping things could go back to the way they were. Tired of pretending like Jake would ever change, dot. At the end of the day, I knew I made the right call. Dad left me what he did for a reason, and Jake wasn't a part of that picture anymore. I had to move forward, with or without him, dot. After that blowout with Jake at the coffee shop, I tried to move on. I told myself it was over. I'd said what I needed to say, and if Jake couldn't accept it, that was on him. But of course, nothing in life is ever that simple. A few days later I got a call from our aunt. She'd heard about the argument, and I could tell she wasn't happy with how things had gone down. She asked me to come over and talk. I already knew where this conversation was headed, but I went anyway. Aunt Lisa had always been the peacemaker in the family, trying to keep everyone together, even when things got messy, dot. When I got to her place, she didn't waste any time. I heard you and Jake had a bit of a fight the other day, she said, giving me one of those looks, like the ones she'd give when she was about to tell me I was being unreasonable. Yeah, we talked, I replied, trying to sound casual. But it didn't change anything. He still thinks he's entitled to dad's money, and I'm not about to hand it over just because he's in a tough spot. Aunt Lisa sighed and leaned back in her chair. I know you and Jake have a lot of history, and I know what he did was wrong. But he's still your brother, and if you keep holding on to this grudge, you're never going to have a relationship with him. I felt my hands clench into fists, and I had to take a deep breath before I responded. It's not about holding a grudge, Aunt Lisa, it's about what he did, and how he's acting now. He had years to fix things with dad, and he didn't. He had years to reach out to me, and he didn't. Now, when there's money involved, suddenly he cares? She nodded, but I could see she was still trying to get me to see things from Jake's perspective. I know it seems like that, but maybe he's reaching out because he finally realizes he made mistakes. Maybe he's just too proud to say it outright. I shook my head. Or maybe he's just saying whatever he thinks will get him the money. I don't trust him, Aunt Lisa. Not after everything. She looked at me for a moment like she was carefully choosing her next words. You know, when your dad was sick, he always hoped you and Jake would work things out. He told me he wanted you two to have each other, especially after he was gone. That stung. I knew dad wanted us to get along. What parent wouldn't? But he also knew what Jake had done, and he knew why I was keeping my distance. I know dad wanted that, but it's not that simple. Jake burned that bridge when he betrayed me. I'm not going to pretend everything's fine just because he suddenly decides he wants to be brothers again. Aunt Lisa sighed again, heavier this time. I get it, and I'm not saying you have to forgive him right away or even give him any money. But don't shut him out completely. If you close that door, you might regret it later. I didn't say anything for a while. I just stared at the floor, thinking about everything. Part of me knew she was right. Holding on to all this anger wasn't healthy. But another part of me couldn't shake the feeling that Jake was only reaching out because he had something to gain. Look, I get what you're saying, I finally said. But Jake made his choice. I'm not closing the door, but I'm not letting him walk back and like nothing happened either. He has to show he's actually sorry, not just because he wants money. She didn't look entirely satisfied, but she nodded. Fair enough. Just promise me you'll think about it, okay? I promise, I said, even though deep down I was already pretty sure where I stood. I wasn't going to change my mind just because Jake suddenly decided to show up. If he wanted to be part of my life again, he was going to have to earn that. A few days later I got another message from Jake. This time it was longer. He said he'd thought about what I said and wanted to try to fix things between us, but he still mentioned the inheritance. I don't want all of it, he wrote, but maybe you could help me out a bit, just a loan or something. I stared at the message for a long time, my finger hovering over the reply button. Alone? After everything? I felt that familiar anger bubbling up again, but I took a breath. Maybe he really was desperate, but then I remembered how he looked at the coffee shop, how he kept trying to justify what he did, and how he still tried to blame me and dad for everything going wrong in his life. I put my phone down without replying. I wasn't going to get dragged into this again. If Jake wanted to fix things, he needed to do it without bringing up the money every time. I wasn't going to be some ATM for him to run to whenever he was struggling. The next day, Aunt Lisa called again. She asked if I'd thought about what we talked about. 
I told her I had, but my mind hadn't changed. I want to see him try for real, Aunt Lisa. If he can't do that without bringing up money, then I don't know what to tell you. She sighed, and I could tell she was disappointed, but she didn't push me. All right, just keep an open mind, okay? After that, I didn't hear from Jake for a while. I focused on my own life, trying to get everything in order. I got a new job, moved to a different apartment, and started building my own life outside of all the drama. It felt good to have a fresh start, even though part of me still felt that nagging ache whenever I thought about how things ended with Jake. I think the hardest part was feeling like I'd lost my brother for good. We used to be so close, and now it felt like we were strangers. I'd see other people hanging out with their siblings, and it would hit me that Jake and I would probably never have that again, unless he really changed. But at the same time, I knew I had to stand by my decision. If I let him walk all over me now, what kind of message would that send? That he could betray me and our dad, disappear for years, and then just come back when it was convenient for him? I wasn't going to let that happen, duh. In the end, I knew I was making the right choice, even if it didn't feel good sometimes. Sticking to your boundaries is the hardest thing to do, especially when it involves family. But I knew if dad were still around, he'd tell me to stay strong and not let anyone take advantage of me, duh. So that's what I did. I moved forward with my life, holding on to the hope that maybe one day, Jake would actually understand what he did and try to make things right. Not for the money, but because he really wanted to be brothers again, duh. Until then, I was done giving him chances.